Checkboxes aren't exactly the most exciting things in Google Sheets. Sure, you can create a to-do list, maybe add in some conditional formatting, but there's actually a lot more we can do. Let's check it out. First, let's just check out that to-do list to make sure we're all on the same page with that conditional formatting. So we've got our to-do list. Let's click these and you can see it's not really that exciting. So let's just change it up. Let's click on cell C3. We'll go up to Format, Conditional Formatting. Off to the right, we can see Apply to Range. We're going to go C3 all the way down to C. In this section here, the Format Rules, we'll change that to Custom Formula Is. And then we'll write equals B3 equals True. Now you can see nothing's happening at this stage because B3 is not currently ticked. So if we tick that, we can see cell C3 turns green. Now we actually want to make it less noticeable. So let's head down to the colors and change this fill color to white and the text color to light gray. We'll also put a stroke through it. So as we complete our tasks, we can tick these off. I'm just using the spacebar on the keyboard and it clears out the to-do list. So that's the basics of conditional formatting with checkboxes. Now let's see how we can change those checkboxes from just true and false to whatever value you want. We're gonna take a look at a chore list. Now this is not the real gold chart for my boys. This is just an example. Let's say that for each of these, the boys get 50 cents. So while they're highlighted, we'll go up to data and head down to data validation. We can see checkbox is in B3 to B8. Down here where it says use custom cell values, let's click that. And if it's checked, we'll say 0 0.5, otherwise zero. Now, for some reason, when you do this, you do get this error here. But if we click on done, we can see up the top here, if we tick this, we get 0 0.5 up here. And we can add all these together to give us our total. So all we need to do is equals sum B3 to B8. Press enter on that and we get 0 0.5. And as we tick these, then it adds up despite us having an error here. So we can just ignore that error and we're good to go. We can see that we now owe the kid $2.50. Now, just as a side note, we don't actually use money in this house as a reward system. Instead, we use stickers. This is my boy's real sticker chart that we fill out every night. If you want to learn how to make this, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Follow along. Sticking with the idea of task lists, we can see that we have five items here, but we have a lot of checkboxes. So what we want to do is hide these checkboxes if there's nothing written in these cells. So let's click on cell B3, go up to format, conditional formatting. We'll change our reply to range to B3 to B. Click on this drop down box and we'll go down to custom formula is. You can see it's all green. That'll change in a moment. And in our custom formula, we'll write equals C3 equals blank with double quotation marks. Down in the color, we'll change the fill color to white and the text color to white as well. You can see straight away, the checkboxes have disappeared. Let's click on done. So we can tick off these as we complete them. But also when we add in a new task, it automatically pops up with a new tech box that we can click when we need it. Oh. There it is. Tick that one off too. Now the problem with this conditional formatting is when we click on the checkbox that is invisible, we get this error. Heads up, you've clicked on a checkbox that is not visible. Do you want to toggle it anyway? And you can see as I move my mouse around in the background, there's some problems happening there. So let's click on OK. So here's a way that you can stop that annoying error from coming up. Let's go back to column B where we've got our conditional formatting. Click on the conditional format. And instead of these colors down here, which are both white, Let's keep one of them as white and the other one will make it off white. So we'll click on custom and we'll change this hex code by one letter. You can see our RGB is 255, 255, 254. Click on OK. They look exactly the same, but really they're different. So when we click on this, look up top, it says false. I'm going to click that and you can see it changes from true to false. No more annoying warnings, but for those of you that have a keen eye, you might have seen something strange on this sheet. If we take a look up here in E to G, I've actually been hiding something this whole time. If we click on A1 here, we can see something's been hiding here the whole time. We can hide things that only you know about. So over in E2, our conditional formatting is a custom formula equals A1 equals false. We'll make this white and white, whichever whites you want, and click on done. So now when you click this, magic. You've got extra security on the sheet and you can hide whatever you want. Let's jump to the next tip. In a previous video, I showed you how to create a randomized seating plan, which you can see up here. Now in that randomized seating plan, you want to re-roll the dice over and over until you're ready to stop. Let's put a checkbox in B2. 
And in C2, let's put the formula equals rand. Now, every time we click the checkbox, that's going to re-roll. If you want it as an actual dice, we can change that formula to equals rand between and put in what your dice value is. Let's say that we want to roll a d20. So it's going to be from 1 to 20. Hit equals on that, and we've just rolled an 11. Every time we hit this, we're re-rolling. Uh-oh, we've got a nat 1. Let's see if we can improve this formula. The problem with this formula is if we do anything else in the spreadsheet, let's insert a new checkbox, it re-rolls. So let's see if we can create a randomizer that only changes when this checkbox is ticked. We'll start with equals lambda. Type in x and then y, these will be our variable names. And then our formula expression. If, open a bracket, y, then x, then nothing. Close a bracket, close a bracket, open a bracket. This is a unique formula, only applies to lambdas. First part in this bracket will be our rand between. Let's go from 1 to 20 again, and then we'll put a comma, and then our y value, our second, our second variable, will be b4. Close a bracket, press enter, we get nothing. Let's hit that checkbox, and we get the number 4. The good thing about this is if we hit another checkbox somewhere else, this one will stay as 4, whereas this one will change. Now if we uncheck this, this does disappear, and if you don't want that to disappear, then you can change the y here to length of y. Hit enter, and now every time we click this checkbox, this is going to change. If we check this one, this one will stay as 3, even though this one is changing. We can do this with timestamps as well, so let's try it again. We'll put in another checkbox, and this time we'll write equals lambda. We'll again start with x and y, put a comma, if length of y, then x, otherwise nothing. Close a bracket, close a bracket open a bracket. The first part of our outside bracket, which is x, will be now. The second part, after the comment, is going to be y. In this case, our y value will be b6. Close that bracket, press enter, and now we get a timestamp. If we change something else, this timestamp doesn't actually change. If we click this, however, it does change. Super handy to help people clock in and out. Just click that box and you're signed in. Simple. Now, as you get more into spreadsheets or coding of any kind, you might find yourself going down the rabbit hole of nerd games. One of those is the advent of code. This one here is mine from last year, and you can see in this cell we have a lot of text. That's scrolling down a heck of a long way, and our goal is to figure out which of these is the longest length of numbers. Our second goal is to add up the longest length of numbers. If we click in here, we can see that we have this formula here, Pretty advanced, and if we take a look in this one, it's not much different. It's just a sum instead of a max. But you can see there's nothing showing. That's because I'm using this checkbox as a loader. If we click this, we can see the numbers appear. Now the reason you want to do this is because if you look down at the bottom of the spreadsheet, you can see a lot of tabs, and these tabs have a lot of calculations in them. As we get more and more of these, if they're already loaded, that's gonna bog down the computer. So untick each of these, and now as you add more and more tabs in, more and more data, these aren't actually running unless we hit that text box. So let's see how we do that. You can see we have the solution here, but this is not checked. So all we need to do is enter the formula, go right to the beginning, and we'll say if, and in this case the text box is in U4, so we'll type in if U4. Put a comma, and then right at the end, put a comma and a bracket. Press enter, and it's disappeared when we click the checkbox, it appears. So if your spreadsheet is getting bogged down with all of those formulas, then maybe go back to that tip to speed it up. Next up, we're going to improve our data analysis reports using checkboxes. But before we do that, I want you to head down to the comments and let me know which tips I've missed out so far, and then head back up, hit that like button, and keep on watching. So we've got here a line graph for the amount of coin in volume over the past few years. Along the bottom, we've got the dates, and along the side, we have the volume in billions. At the moment, the graph is currently showing Bitcoin, but if we were to tick these, we can see Ethereum and Shiba Inu. So there's a few ways we can do this. First, we're going to need the raw data. So if we click back to sheet one, we can see the raw data here. Now this is the volume of the coin from 2014 all the way through to last week. So step one is to find this information online. Step two, we're gonna head back to sheet two, and if we scroll down, we can see there is another set of information here. 
Down the side here, we have all of sheet one from A2 to A with the curly brackets. And then in here, we have an if statement. So this if statement is saying if C2 is true, then return all of sheet one B2 to B. Otherwise, return nothing. Now up here, you can see C2 is Bitcoin, C3 is Ethereum, and C4 is Shiba Inu. And if we go down here, each of our if statements correspond to the right checkbox. C2 for Bitcoin, C3 for Ethereum, and C4 for Shiba Inu. Inside the curly brackets, we have B2 to B. For Ethereum, it's sheet 1, C2 to C. And for Shiba Inu, sheet 1, D2 to D. So if we look over on sheet 1, we have column B being Bitcoin, column C being Ethereum, and column D being Shiba Inu. So if we tick these tick boxes, then you can see they disappear or reappear as needed. And that allows us to show a graph like this to compare different cryptocurrencies. Our next tip is something that doesn't come up very often because when someone online asks, hey, can we have a select all button? The responses are always, hey, you need to use app script for that. But I've actually found a way around that without any app script. So in the spreadsheet, you can see we have this shopping list. We can tick these individual items, or if we wanted to, we could just click this select all button. Now, this doesn't use any app script, which most people would think it does. Instead, it actually uses a formula right here. So if we untick this, we can see everything gets unticked. And the first thing it says is if error. Now this if error just says if there's an error anywhere, ignore it, except for a ref error. Don't ignore that one. Next up, if C2 equals true, then do all this stuff. Otherwise, do nothing. So if this cell here in C2 is ticked, then do all that other stuff. Otherwise, do nothing. And that's why we end up with a whole bunch of empty tick boxes. Let's take a look again and see what all that stuff is. So in here, we start off and end with curly braces. Now curly braces are what's called an array literal. So let's just see what an array literal does. Well, if we type in equals and then a curly brace, then we can type in some numbers. Let's say one, two, three, four. End with a curly brace and in between each one is a semicolon. Now, if you're in Europe, then that semicolon is actually a backslash. So use that instead. And if we press enter, we get a column of numbers. Now, if we wanted a row of numbers going across, then we'll just change these semicolons to commas. Again, in Europe, those commas would now be semicolons. So a little bit confusing for our European friends. I'm just going to change them back to semicolons to give us that column. And that's how this magic here works. You can see that the checkboxes are all in one column. So if we take a look at that equation again, it says if B4 equals false, then do nothing. Otherwise, true. Now B4 is all the way over here. It's not actually referencing these cells, it's referencing these cells. Because again, going back to our previous tip, there are invisible checkboxes here. So that allows us to select all and then actually deselect everything. We can't deselect these directly, it just doesn't work because this formula is overriding it. If, however, that's not selected, we can select these. A little bit confusing, but hey, that's the way to set it up without using any app script. Speaking of app script though, we can actually take advantage of it. So let's open up a new spreadsheet and for this tip, we're going to simulate radio buttons. Now, if you're not sure, radio buttons are these ones here. So if we add in a few extra options and then open that up, you can see radio buttons only allow us to choose one thing at a time. Now we can actually do this in Google Sheets. We just need some scripts. So here we've got our quiz questions. A, B, C, D are our multiple choices. And we only want our users to select one at a time. In order to do this, we're going to have to use app script. So let's head up to extensions, app script, let that load. And then once it's loaded, we're going to select everything. Control V to paste in the code that is in the description down below. Save it, run it. And now when we click one of these, we can see that the other option automatically disappears. If we click C in question two, then A disappears and we now have C. Which works great in Google Sheets if you've got that app script. But why would you do that when you've got Google Forms or Drop Form? Link in the description. Now let's see if we can put some of those things into practice. So we have here a new spreadsheet. We're going to do the normal. So resize columns A to B. We're going to make them 30 large. Let's put a send question mark here because we're going to be sending emails. So let's select these, insert, checkbox. And then along here, let's just open that up. Let's put some details in there. We're going to start off with email and then name followed by the subject line. 
and the body of the email. So let's say that we wanted to send an email. I'm just going to send it to myself in mathlabnz at gmail.com. The name, well, my name is Hash, so let's chuck it in there. What is the subject line? Let's just say, glad you could join us. And the body, let's just write something out. We'll start off with hi hash, and then if I hold alt and enter, I can create a new line. Once we've got that all set up, I like to control A, hit up the top, go vertical align at the top, just so that we can see what's aligned with what. Now to get this to work, we're gonna go up to extensions, app script, and then paste in the script. Save it, run it, and then we need to go through the authorization. So we click on review permissions, choose the account that you want, click on advanced, and then go to untitled project. Now it does say unsafe, but that's only because Google hasn't verified this app. So click on that anyway, and then click allow. We can see the execution started and completed. We'll open up Gmail. We can see an email from me called glad you could join us. Let's open that up. And we can see the email that I just sent to myself using Google Sheets. Now the good thing about this is you can send another email in here and the script will run only on the lines that have ticked checkboxes. Let's click on insert, drawing, make a new drawing, click save and close, then click these three dots, assign script, and we need to get the script name. In this case, it was send emails, copy that, paste it in, and click OK. So when we click on this, you can see a script is running, it's finished, and if we take a look at the emails, we can see two emails, one is glad you could join us, and the other one, hello again, that we just created. So it's actually pretty wild what we can accomplish in Google Sheets with just a simple checkbox. Now personally, my favorite tip of these was the email checkbox because I've pretty much automated my entire report writing system completely in Google Sheets. But I really wanna know which of these tips was your favorite and which could you use in your system? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you next time.